Hi all, I'm back with the uh, horizontal mortising machine. Um, I'm actually quite surprised with the amount of attention this machine has gotten on YouTube. Um, I appreciate all your views, all your comments. Um, I try to respond to every one of them. Um, it's time to come back to this because I have another project that's going to require some mortises. But instead of cabinet doors, these are actually architectural doors and they're much larger much heavier and I need a machine that's going to handle that and this one just quite isn't up to the task. Um, biggest problems with this machine um, that I want to address, I'm going to build a new one. Um, there's really three main things I want to address. Um, the first, first of all is the size. I need a, a bigger machine to handle the size of the parts that I'm dealing with. The second thing is the rigidity. Um, this thing works fine for small parts, for cabinet doors, stuff like that, but for uh, two inch thick, eight and a half foot long chunk of walnut that I have to put a mortise in. I'm going to need something that's more rigid. So I'm going to try, try to address that. Um, the next thing is um, my hold down. Currently I just screw this down wherever I want it. Eventually I'm going to run out of, I'm going to drill this whole top out. It's just going to be too full of holes to, to do that anymore. So the new machine, I'm going to address that as well. I'm going to use some T-Track and some other things to, to address that. And I'd also like to um, come up with a better better way to control the size of my mortises um, than, than my current stop block system. We'll see what I come up with. Um, a lot of you have asked for plans. Um, I don't use plans, typically, um, because I can't foresee everything. Um, and I'm just going to tell you this. If you're in this profession or hobby or whatever you want to call however you relate to woodworking you've got to learn to design things for yourself uh, I'm going to show you how this works I'm going to show you the key components to it but um, quite honestly if you can't with what I give you if you can't design it yourself um, you need some instruction you don't need to be in a shop by yourself that's my opinion um, that's kind of cold and hard maybe but that's it don't kill yourself um, a lot of you have asked me about the dovetail system on this machine. Um, how do I make those? You can see right here, all it is is I take a piece of plywood and I cut it at an angle. And the corresponding piece of plywood at the corresponding angle. And I'm going to show you how I make those. Um, but it's just trapped in there. It's just angled piece of dovetail and I wax that so it slides really well. Put two of them in a 90 degree 90 degrees to each other and you've got a functional cross slide table. The first step on my new machine is the top. For the new machine, instead of just bodging it together from scraps of MDF and plywood, I actually went out and got some high quality um, Baltic birch, Russian birch plywood. Um, it's 12 millimeters, basically half an inch thick. Um, the T-Track I'm using is 3 eighths of an inch thick, so that gives me a problem. If I just use a half inch top, I don't have enough meat to screw down my T-Track. So the first step of the machine is to glue two pieces of plywood together so that you get a full inch thickness of, of your top so you can cut a 3 eighths inch deep dado and then screw down your T-Track and have enough meat below that. So um, the only important thing here is I've got two pieces of plywood. Um, I'm laying them out at 90 degrees to each other so that the grain on this plywood is running this direction and the grain on the bottom piece is running that direction. And that's going to even out um, any twist to the plywood that I've got. Um, no plywood's perfect so I'm just doing that to compensate. I'm just going to glue these together. Pretty basic. Throw some glue on them. Throw some weight on them to hold them down. At this point you're probably asking, what do you need for materials? Well, I'm trying to build this machine out of a single 60 inch by 60 inch sheet of plywood. So what you need to start off with are six 19 and 15 16 inch by 19 and 15 16 inch squares of plywood. Now why the fraction? Let's say you can get three of these out of one strip of the piece of plywood because um, you need six and that leaves you 
a 60 inch by 20 inch strip left to use for the rest of the machine. So you just need four of these squares of plywood plus the two for the base that I already showed you. The next step happens at the table saw. All I've done is tilted my blade to 25 degrees, set my fence at 5 inches and I'm just going to run them through. The next step is to uh, actually make the dovetail slides. Um, all you're going to do, take your angled pieces, line them up on your base piece, like so, and the center section is going to be your slide. So all I'm going to do, nothing too fancy here, um, just going to apply some glue. Doesn't have to be perfectly spread out, it'll hold, I promise. Line them up. And I'm just going to shoot some brads in here to keep them from floating around when I clamp them down. This isn't fine furniture, there's nothing wrong with using a few brads. I put this next one in. I want to, you want to squeeze them together kind of tight. Um, you know, you can always loosen it up later, but tightening it up is a real pain. So I'm just going to get it kind of tight here. I'm just going to squeeze it together pretty good. And shoot it in place. You see that's kind of tight. That's how we want it. We'll fix that. Or we want it. It'll probably be fine once we wax it. Okay, so that's your bottom slide. So now we do our next layer. All we do is turn it 90 degrees. Now you really, you know, you want to make sure you start off with square stock, so all you have to do is line up your edges and you're good to go. Um, nothing more to it than that. Um, make sure on this you don't shoot this middle section down. This part has to move and these cross slides are actually attached to the middle section not to the outside. If you shoot on the outside you just screwed up. So I'm just going to add a little glue here Make sure I'm aligned on my edge here. Make sure I still move. Put in my middle section. Put on my other side. Check for alignment. Some more glue down.
Good. We're good to go.